Okay, now we're ready for something super fun <clears throat> called the binomial, the binomial theorem. So, um, yay, this is how it goes. The binomial theorem, I have some blanks on your sheet. And so this is what you put in the blanks. It says the binomial theorem is a formula for writing the terms of a two term polynomial, which is called a binomial, um, to any natural number power. And so what goes in the last blank is this, a plus b to the n. This is a, a binomial, a two-term polynomial being raised to a natural number power. Okay, so just to get an idea of what it's about, um, I said consider these binomials being raised to power. Now, even though zero is not a natural number, we're going to include it because you'll see why in a second. Okay. Um, anything to the zero power is equal to one, right? So this is equal to one. That's what this is. Okay, that's fine. Um, a plus B raised to the first power is equal to A plus B. All right. A plus B raised to the second power is equal to A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. Okay. A plus B to the third power is equal to A to the third power plus, mm, I think it's a 3 a squared B plus another three A B squared plus B to the third power. So if I were to expand these binomials raised to a power, and what I mean by expand is multiply them together, A plus B times A plus B, or A plus B times A plus B times A plus B, this is what I get. So this is something really cool that you come across um, in math, and it's called Pascal's triangle. So Pascal's triangle looks like this. Pascal's triangle. There is a one at the top and there are ones all along the sides of this triangle. One, one. And how you form anything in the middle is you add the, um, you add the, you start adding the terms in the middle. So about here, I'm going to have a 1 on the outside, but how I'm going to get this middle term is I'm going to add 1 plus 1 and get a 2. And then there's a 1 on the outside. There are always 1s on the outside. And I'm going to add 1 plus 2, and that's going to give me 3. And I'm going to add 2 plus 1, and that's going to give me 3. And then I'm going to go down one more just to illustrate this. 1s on the outside. 1 plus 3 gives me a 4. 3 plus 3 gives me a, what is that, 6? 3 plus 1 gives me a 4. Okay, and this goes on and on and on forever. Okay, so this is a um, really cool thing. Um, why is it cool? I mean, it looks cool. Yes, of course. Here's another thing. I went to a math conference once, and I heard this whole big talk about Pascal's triangle. And so this guy had done research of Pascal's triangle, and he read all these books people have written about different patterns, crazy patterns that people have found in um, Pascal's trial. So there's a lot of research about this guy. It goes on and on and on. It's kind of cool. But we're not going to go into all that. We're just going to use it for what we need it, which is how it relates to the binomial theorem. So this somehow relates to the binomial theorem, and this is how. Let me just write some numbers here. Right here, I'm going to write n is 0. Right here, I'm going to write n is 1 n is 2, n is 3, n is 4, and the n that I'm writing down has to do with the power that a binomial is being raised. So if you look at this, okay, n to the 0 power gives us just the 1, okay. Um, I said a plus b to the first power gives us a plus b, and I have this 1 and this 1. These are the coefficients in front of the terms. This is the one and the one right there that you're seeing. N is two. This is when N is two. One, two, one. These are the coefficients. One, two, one. When N is to the third power, one, three, three, one. This is the coefficient, the coefficient, the coefficient, the coefficient. These would be the coefficients of the next term. So that's kind of really cool. And um, that's how it relates. So. Sometimes people use Pascal's triangle to find the coefficients of the terms when they're expanding a binomial. 
There is another way, and that's the binomial theorem, and I'll show you. Sometimes you need to know both. Sometimes if it's a, like a really short, if it's not raised to a high power, then fine. We can just get away with Pascal's triangle. If the power is raised to like 21 or 40 or something, wow, that takes a lot of time and effort and paper, and maybe you'll add wrong. I've seen students do it, but there's a different way, which I'm going to show you, and it has to do with... Um, Combinations. So just in case you're not familiar with combinations, let me introduce this to you. Um, first, we got to know what a factorial is. When you see an exclamation mark next to a number, that is a factorial. So if you have n factorial, this is what this reads. Fact, it looks like this. Factorial. Um, and the exclamation mark is what that means. That means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 until you get down to 1. So, for instance, uh, 7 factorial is equal to 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. You would multiply all those numbers up, and that's what 7 factorial equals to. By definition, 0 factorial is equal to 1. This is a big deal because that really doesn't seem like it makes sense because 0 times anything is 0. 0 factorial is defined to be 1, so we've got to know that. Now, if you've taken statistics of any kind, um, probability is where this would fall into the category. You'd see factorials probably and combinations. If you've heard of combinations, per permutations, that's where you see this sort of thing. Um, this is a combination, n over r in these parentheses. Also, you might have seen it like this n choose r, this is, this is equivalent to this, n choose r. And so this has to do with like, if you have to, the examples that I've seen and really, I'm not, a, I'm not really good and not a big fan of statistics, I'm a probability for sure, I'm not, it's hard for me. But, um, but if you've seen the most of the examples I've seen, it's like if you gotta choose a committee and you have 12 people to choose from and you only need five people on it, that would be 12 choose five is the combination that you would say. How many different combinations of people could I make? It's sort of thing. Um, so, this is what this means. N choose R is what this, this means. So, this is how this works. Um, it's equal to N factorial over R factorial divided by N minus R factorial. So, what I've given us is some examples on our sheet just to practice using this language because we need it when we're going to apply the binomial theorem, which is coming up shortly. So, number one, and I am going to do it by hand, but then I'm going to show you how to do it with your calculator, and you are welcome to do it either way. Um, 8 factorial over 6 factorial, 2 factorial. Um, and then number two, we're supposed to evaluate 10, choose 6. Number three, we're supposed to evaluate 34, 34. Number four, we're supposed to evaluate 12, choose eight. Okay, so let's do these real quick. Um, eight factorial is eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Divided by six factorial times two factorial, six times five times four times three times two times one. Two factorial is two times one. All right. What I'm going to do, and this is pretty easy, is cancel common factors. 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is going to cancel with 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Then I'm left with 2 times 1. 2 can go into 8 4 times. I'm left with 4 times 7 times 1, 28 over 1. This is equal to 28. Now, you don't have to do it by hand. In a minute, I'll show you a calculator. But that is, you can. It's not that hard. How would you even set this up? 10 choose 6. Well, the top number is n. So this is equal to 10 factorial divided by r, which is the bottom number, 6 factorial times n minus r, 10 minus 6 factorial. All right. So this is really 10 over 6 times 4. And we can do the same thing we did there. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, divided by 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, because we have a 6 factorial right here, 4 times 
four times three times two times one. Now, I'm writing all this out because I'm teaching right now. If I were doing this on my own, I would just say, oh, six factorial, six factorial. I would just not even write that down. But it's fine. This will cancel with that. Now, what do I have here? I have four times two is an eight, so I'm going to take that out. And then I'm left with a three, which we can go into nine three times. So I'm left with a seven times a three, which is 21 times 10. This is going to be 210. You do not have to do this by hand, but it's not that hard. I wanted you to see that. This one I'm definitely doing by hand because it's kind of cool. 34, choose 34. 34, choose 34. What's going to happen here? N is 34 factorial divided by R, 34 factorial times N minus R, 34 minus 34 factorial. What happens here? 34 over 34. 34 minus 34 is zero. Now, this looks like I'm dividing by zero. This should cause all kinds of terrible feelings inside unless you realize that zero factorial is equal to one by definition, so it's a one, so that's great. This is 34 factorial. 34 times one is 34 factorial. This is a one. This is what this ends up being, okay? Now, here's how you use your calculator to find a combination if you want to. So I'm gonna use it for this one. I, I convert this in R to N choose R because that's how I want my calculator. I'm going to say 12 choose 8. And this is how you find that button. And again, it's the TI. That's what I know how to use. Hit your math button. And then if you go, all, you got to use your right arrow and go all the way over to where it says PRB for probability. And then mine is number three. It says N choose R. N choose R. Okay, so I didn't. That's how I'm going to get to it. But before I even get to that, I have to do this. I have to put in the 12. So I put 12. I have to put the N down. 12. Go to my calculator. Hit math. Go all the way to probability. Hit number three. I did it again. Hit 12. Sorry. And then hit math. Go over to PRB. Hit three. And then I have this. 12. N choose R, and then I'm going to put in the C, just hit 8, and then enter. So this is what I have right before I hit enter. And it tells me that it's 495. If you want to check it, do 34, choose 34, and you'll see you get 1. 34, math, go all the way to probability, hit 3, 34, and you're going to get a 1. Okay, so that's how you can use your calculator. Now... Finally, the binomial theorem. It is a beautiful theorem. Um, I'm not going to go through all the details of it. I'm going to just demonstrate it, and the, my demonstration is going to be in line with what the theorem says in your little box on your worksheet. So number five, use the binomial theorem to expand the expression a minus b to the fifth power. This is how we're going to do it. minus b to the fifth power. Now, before I do this, I want you to look earlier on the notes. When we expanded the term um, a plus b to the first and a plus b to the second, we got a plus b and we got a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. This is what I want you to take note of. How many terms did this end up being? Two terms. What was the power? One. Okay. How many terms do we end up getting? One, two, three terms. What was the power? Two. This pattern will be throughout. There will be one more term in the expansion than there are the power that's being raised to. So, this is being raised to the fifth power. Okay. So, I'm going to expect six terms. That's true. Okay. Now, do you see how there's a minus b? You need to think of this, think of this as a plus negative b. And we're just going to tack that negative right there with the b. This is equivalent. So that's how I'm going to call my second term is going to be negative b. Whenever I have a negative second term or first term, the negative is just going to be part of that term. All right, so this is how I do expansions, um, and I think it works well. I plan for my terms, okay? 
So um, each term is going to have a coefficient, coefficient, and then it's going to have the first term raised to a power, and then it's going to have the second term raised to a power. Every single term is going to have that, okay? And there's going to be six of them. This is my first one. This is my second one. This is me planning. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. All right. Now, the first one is going to be the coefficient. I'm going to do not, I'm not going to, you can use Pascal's triangle, but I'm not going to do that. I want to demonstrate how to do the binomial theorem way. So, the first term is our coefficient, which is, um, if you look at the theorem, it's n choose r, or it's going to have an n choose r. And so, this is how you always do it. The top number is going to be this power right here, 5. And the bottom number is always going to start with 0. So, then when you go to your second term, this is always going to be a 5, but then this starts counting up. From 0, it goes to 1. 5 goes to 2. 5 goes to 3, 5 goes to 4, 5 goes to 5. That's what the first one is, the n choose r. And you'll know you're finished when you have the same number. Now, what goes here is the first term, which is an a. It's going to go in each one of these, a, to a power. Now, what power does he go to? Well, he goes to the fifth power. He starts with 5, and then he starts counting down, a to the fourth. A to the third, two, one, zero, all right? Then the second term is what goes in the last one. So negative B, negative B, negative B, negative B, negative B, negative B, negative B. Now what does he go to? This is how you can think of him. He will always match this bottom number right here. So this is bottom number is zero, this is a zero. Um, bottom number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Another way you can think of how to find the power B is these, the sum of these two powers will always add up to 5. 5 plus 0 is 5. 4 plus 1, 5. 3 plus 2, 5. That will always be consistent. So that's another way you can think of that. There's other patterns you might pick up on which, you know, oh, can I do it that way? And you probably can because there's lots of patterns here. All right, so now we just got to, haven't got to, there's my English, good, good English, okay. Um, now we need to figure out the, the numbers that go with this. So, we can use our calculator and do n choose r. We can use the formula. I'm not going to take the time to do all this. I know what this, I know this is going to be a 1. This will always be a 1. 5 choose 0. This is interesting. 5, um, factorial over zero factorial times five minus zero factorial is what this is. And that's five factorial over a one times a five factorial. So this is a one. This one will always be a one and this one will always be a one because that's Pascal's triangle right there. Okay, so this is a one. This is a to the fifth. Negative b to the zero, anything to the zero power is one. Okay, five choose one. When we figure out that one, that's going to be a 5. Um, a to the 4th times negative b to the 1. 5, 2, 2. Now, I would, I've already done this. This is why I'm just saying the answers. It's because I already did the, what is this going to be? 5 factorial over 2 factorial times 5 minus 2 factorial. I already figured that out. Um, so, this is 10. A to the 3rd. Um, negative b to the 2nd which is going to be negative b times a negative b is going to be a positive b squared. 5 choose 3 is also 10. This is going to be a squared um, times negative b cubed. Uh, negative to an odd power remains negative. Let me not lose that negative right there. That's a negative. Okay. Um, 5 choose 4 is going to be a 5. a to the 1, b to the 4th. 5 choose 5 is going to be a 1. a to the 0 is a 1. Negative b to the 5th is negative b the fifth. So what is this going to be? 1, 1, a to the fifth is a to the fifth. Negative 5 minus 5, a to the fourth, b. Plus 10, a to the third, b to the second. Uh, minus 10, a to the second, b to the third. Plus 5, a, b to the fourth, minus b to the fifth. 
Okay, so that's a demonstration of using the binomial theorem to expand. And this is fairly simple. One, um, you can use it for as complicated as they get, and it's very handy. So let's do another one. Um, use the binomial um, theorem to expand the expression t, t to the fourth plus f to the fourth. Okay, so let's do that. t to the fourth plus f to the fourth. So the a, the first term is t to the fourth, the second term is f. I'm going to have five, so here's my plan. One, two, three. That's my first guy. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is my fifth term. I know there's always one more than the power. Okay, it goes like this. Four, zero. Four, one. Four, two. Four, three. Four, four. The first term is t to the fourth. t to the fourth t to the fourth, t to the fourth, t to the fourth. The second term is f, 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 f. Now, what are they being raised to? t to the fourth, the first time is to the fourth, and this is zero. And then it starts counting down. Three, and this is going to match this. One, two, two. Um, this is going to be one, and this is three. This is going to be zero, and this is four. Um, so that adds up to four, adds up to four, adds up to four, adds up to four, adds up. Okay, I feel okay about that. Four two zero is one. T to the fourth to the fourth is T to the sixteen times a one. Four choose one. Let me see. I'm on the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. I might just borrow that real quick. What is the fifth row? Let's we'll see. Zero, one, two, three, four. Oh, I didn't do the fifth row. The fifth row is going to be one, ten, ten, one, ten, ten. Is that one, oh, one, five, ten, ten, five, one. Uh, 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 uh. Wait, no, that was fifth. What is this? Maybe it's going to be one less than that. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's going to be one. One, four, six, four, one. That's what it's going to be. Okay. No, it's on the wrong row. Okay. So this is a one. This is going to be a four. T, four to the third is T to the twelfth times F. Uh, four choose two is going to be a six. T to the eight, F squared. Four choose three is going to be another four. T to the fourth. F cubed, four choose four is gonna be a one times a one, something to the zero is one times F to the fourth. Okay, ready? This is gonna be T to the 16 plus four, T to the 12th times F plus six, T to the eighth, F squared plus four, T to the fourth, F cubed plus F to the fourth. So this is the expansion of that binomial. All right, let's do one more, and then I'll teach you how to find like a term just kind of in the middle of some expansion. So, um, what is the next one? It is to do the binomial expansion for. Oh, I've lost it. Don't lose it. Okay. Oh, for something a little more complicated. Okay, so this one looks like this. It is the binomial expansion for 2x to the 4th minus 3y to the 7th. 2x to the 4th minus 3y to the 7th. Is that right? No, minus 3y to the 7th. Okay, so how many terms are we going to have? 8, one more than that power. I'm going to tack that negative in there with 3. I'm going to think of this as plus negative 3y. That's how I'm going to think of it. So those are my two terms. So let's, here's my plan. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, and eight. All right, what goes in the first thing goes is the coefficient. So it goes like this. <clears throat> the power, it's the top number, seven. It's gonna go in the top, seven, 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 seven. Now, let me just say, you might think this is like, takes a long time, but this doesn't take any time at all compared to if you had to take two X to the fourth minus three Y times two X to the fourth minus three Y times two X to the fourth minus three Y seven times. That would be kind of a nightmare. So this is not bad. This is really handy. Um, this is zero, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? And then what goes in here is the first term, two x to the fourth, 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 two x to the fourth. What goes in the second one is the second term, negative three y, minus three y, minus three y, minus three minus 3y, minus 3y, minus 3y, minus 3y. Now we put on the powers. Okay, this is going to um, start the second power. You can do it by the second power. I think it's pretty easy. It matches the bottom number. So if that's 0, what do I have to add to 0 to get 7? It would be 7. This is 1. That's got to be a 6. This is 2. That's got to be a 5. This is 3. This has got to be a 4. This is 4. This has got to be a 3. This is five, that's two. This is six, that's one. This is seven, that's gotta be a zero. So that's a way to lay it out. You can use your combinations um, for time. I'm not gonna spend a long time trying to guess or figure it out because I've already done it. I know this is a one. And so two to the, this is two to the seventh. Um, four times seven is gonna be x to the 28th. And this is a one, okay? Seven choose one is gonna be a seven. This is going to be times 2 to the 6th, x to the 24, times negative 3. 7 choose 2 is 21. This is going to be 2 to the 5th, x to the 20th. Negative 3 squared is going to be 9y squared. Okay, oops, I lost off my y right here. Okay, um, 7 choose 3 is going to be 35. 2 to the 4th is 16, x 4 times 4 is 24, oh, no, 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 4 times 4 is 16, um, negative 3 to the 3rd is negative 27y cubed, 7 choose 4 is another 35, um, 2 to the 3rd is 8, x to the 12th, uh, negative 3 to the 4th is 81y, 7 choose 5 is going to be 21, times 2 squared is 4, x to the 8th, uh, negative 3 to the 5th is, I don't know, oh, it's negative 243, y to the 5th, okay, and then down here, 7 to 6 is a 7, 2, 2 times 2, x to the 4th, times negative 3 to the 6th is going to be 729, y to the 6th, 7 to 7 is 1, this is 1, negative 3 to the 7th is, it's a big number, it is negative 2187, y to the 7th. Okay, now I'm going to clean this up. This times this times this, 2 to the 7th, what is that guy? I used my calculator, I got, this is 128x to the 28th, minus 1344, 1344 four, four. x to the 24y plus 6048 x to the 20th y squared mm -hmm. minus 15120 x to the 16 
y to the third plus 2, 6, 8, no, 2, 2, 6, 8, 0, x to the 12th, y to the 4th, minus 2, 0, 4, 1, 2, x to the 8th, y to the 5th, plus 1, 0, 2, 0, 6, x to the 4th, y to the 6th, Minus 2187y to the 7th. So, that might have seemed like a lot of work, but it's not in comparison to having to multiply that guy together seven times. Okay, lastly, I'm going to show you how to just find a, something in the middle. So, to find a term just in the middle of some big expansion, we pick up on patterns. So, let's just look at this one. Um, number 8, find the 15th term of, I want the 15th term of c cubed plus d to the 20th. All right? So we need to go in and grab a middle term like that. It's not that hard to do, but we do need to pick up on the pattern. So let's just look at this guy we just expanded, and we can pick up on something. Um, this is the first term right here. You with me? And this is the second term, and this is the third term. Look at the first term. The bottom number is zero, one less than one, right? Okay, the second term, this is the second term. For the second term, the bottom number is one, it's one less than that. If we're interested in the 15th term, what is the bottom number gonna be? It's gonna be 14. What is the top number gonna be? It's always gonna be 20. Then you have the first term raised to a power, c to the third, the second term raised to a power. What is the second term always raised to? He's always raised to this bottom number, 14. How can we figure out what this guy's raised to? Well, this plus this has to always equal n, which is 20. So 14 plus 6 will give us the 20. So this is how we can figure this out. This is going to be c, um, 3 times 6 is 18, d to the 14. And let's figure out this number by using our calculator. If we use our calculator and do 20 to 14, we get 38,760. And so this is the 15th term of that. What if we had to go in and just pick out a middle term? Find the ninth term of this guy. Okay. 4x cubed uh, minus 3y to the 11th. Find the ninth term. Okay, remember? Ninth term, but the bottom number is going to be one less than that. So that's going to be an 8 down there. So for the ninth term, that's an 8. The top number is always n, something to a power, something to a power. It's 4x to the third. It's negative 3y. This second term's power always is that number, 8. 8 plus what gives me 11? 3. So 11 choose 8 is 165. You can use your calculator for that. 4 to the 3rd is 64, and this is going to be x to the 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 3 to the 8th, oh, I'd use my calculator, 65, 61, y to the 8th. If I multiply all my co numbers together, coefficients, I get 69,284,069. Oh, no, no. Two eight four one six zero x nine x to the ninth y to the eighth ah the binomial theorem.